Hello everyone. Today we are going to solve problem 57 of chapter 18. If the gear is released from rest, determine its angular velocity after its center of gravity has descended a distance of four feet. The gear has a weight of 100 pounds and a radius of gyration about its center of gravity of 0.75 feet. Uh, so we have the initial angular velocity, we want to find uh, the final angular velocity. And if you look at the problem, the only forces that we have here are conservative forces. So the energy is conserved. So it's very easy to write conservation of energy and solve this problem. So conservation of energy is telling us P1 plus V1 equals P2 plus V2, the initial kinetic energy plus uh, the initial potential energy equals the final kinetic energy and the final potential energy. So if I look at the problem, the gear is released from rest. So the initial kinetic energy is zero. The potential energy, I have to see what potential energy I have. I don't have any spring, so I don't have any elastic potential energy. I have gravitational potential energy, but I can get rid of that if I set my coordinate here in the initial position and saying that, okay, it starts from here, but well, that would be zero. So all I have would be the final kinetic energy and the final potential energy. So I'm gaining kinetic energy and I'm losing potential energy. So my potential energy would go negative. So my kinetic energy could become positive. So this gear is losing height to gain speed. So T, the kinetic energy, I know the equation is half Ig omega squared plus half mvg squared because I don't want to find vg and omega. So sometimes it's easier to write about a fixed point, which is here. So that would be half I, I'm going to call that point C omega squared. And you would see, according to a parallel axis theorem, these two equations would, would become the same. So if we replace V with R omega, you would get Ig plus M R, R squared omega squared. So let's find the kinetic energy. Half, we don't have the moment of inertia about this. This is not a perfect circular disk. So it's a complicated shape and the question has given us the center of uh, the radius of gyration. The radius of gyration, similar to moment of inertia, is defined uh, about an axis. The axis that we have is Ig. So we need to use parallel axis here and to move it to the point that we like. So that's Ig plus M r squared omega squared. What is Ig? I have radius of gyration, so that makes it easy for me. That would be m k squared plus m r squared omega squared. If I replace everything here, I have the weight, so again, not the mass, so you need to divide it by 32 0.17 to get the mass in a slug. I have K, which is 0.7, uh, 5 squared. I'm running out of space here. Is, I'm going to write it here. M again. I could factor M as well. That would have made it simpler. And R squared, which is here, is 1 and the whole thing multiplied by omega squared. So T, the second kinetic energy would be 2.43 omega squared. I don't have omega, that's the unknown of the problem. The potential energy that I have is the gravitational potential energy and all I have is the distance that it falls. Mg is the weight, so it's 100. It falls four feet, so that would be negative 400. So we are losing 400, so we have to gain 400, but in different form. 
in the kinetic energy. So negative 400 would be 2.43 omega squared equals zero. So omega would be 12.84. Radian per second. Uh, so for this problem, we did not have any initial energy. We lost some sort of energy and then gained another sort of energy. So the overall was um, zero. Uh, we moved our uh, center of our moment of inertia to this point, which is which is zero. So we don't have to include the linear component. Remember that for this problem, this one is zero, but sometimes uh, you have both type of motion, both rotation, and also this point is moving upward as well. So that means that for those problems, you need to include the linear component uh, as well. 